Hey, David White in here. I've got, I don't know if you guys know this, or you probably do, because I've been around for a long, long, long time. And one of my greatest mm, passions is health. I mean, I can sit around on YouTube at night and I can watch videos on health and blood sugar and, and cholesterol. And yeah, I know you just guys could get real bored by that. But you know what? Health is everything. It means everything. And it's amazing how many people, and, and if you're one of these people, okay, you need to really listen. And I want you to write something down. This is going to be an interactive, um, it's going to be an interactive session for you, okay? And I want you to kind of write this down. On a scale from one to 10, where do you rate your knowledge of health? Okay, write that down. On a scale from one to 10, where do you rate your awareness of your own health? Meaning, do you just go to the regular doctor, okay, the Western doctor who basically does a blood panel on you and basically doesn't even do your insulin resistance and doesn't even do your A1C and doesn't even do anything. He just does the, just the basic markers, right? You really have absolutely no idea. How many of you understand um, on a scale from 1 to 10 that you're not your genetics? Ooh, that's a good one. Well, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. That's when people used to go to movies. So now we don't go to movies. And by the way, AMC stock is now called Ape. Go figure that out. You go to the movie theater there, you have some bananas and some popcorn and you throw it to people. Oh, that reminds me of going to New York City movie theaters when I was in my 20s. Anyway, we're going to talk about health today. Your health. Your health. Your health today is the most important thing that you can possibly imagine and possibly think about. Your health. We have one body, one mind, one soul. Now, I know a lot of you understand and really believe, you know, that our bodies are just rented cars for our souls. I mean, that's pretty much the truth. We're going to go rent another car in our next life. And when we come back, I'd like to come back as a Tesla that has a range of like 5,000 miles on it, you know. So I just basically don't ever, I don't age. I just keep going and going and going. So we're going to talk about health right now with an amazing man who lives in Hawaii. Why do all the amazing people live in Hawaii? Because they're smart. Because why should they live on the mainland and deal with traffic and other things when they can look and see all the amazing, beautiful nature and the herbs that grow and the energy fields that are there, just the, the, you know, the magnetic energy when you put your feet in the ground. I mean, it's awesome. So I've got somebody who I am absolutely fond with who's actually been working on my health. Um, my health hasn't been great the last three weeks, but hey. It's got nothing to do with him. It's got to do with, you know, we pick things up in life and we process things through sometimes fast, sometimes slow. And But um, Glenn gives me things that I fully have faith and trust in. And I think you need to listen to this because you are going to come out of this interview, listening to this interview, feeling way healthier than you ever did before. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to Dr. Glenn. Dr. Glenn, how are you? Doing pretty good. <laughs> good. Grateful. <laughs> good. That's a that was a long long winded uh, wind up, <laughs> but you know some people deserve short wind ups, some people deserve long wind ups. So before we go into what a lot of the questions that you gave me, I want you to give people the background, your background, okay? Where this journey started, what type of doctor did you start off with, and how did you end up getting into, you know, really changing the way you move and go through it because. The holistic route to me has always has been the route since I was I'm 60 and since I was 33 and I moved to Boulder and I met my first airy fairy, you know, muscle testing person. I looked at them I was like, what are you doing? Why are you grabbing my wrist and, and moving it up and down like this? You're very damp. I, I know it's like 95 degrees. I'm sweating, I'm sweating, sweating like great. No, you're damp. And they gave me something and I felt great, better than I ever felt in my entire life. So I was sold. So, Glenn, how did you start this journey? Where did, where did your process come from? Well, you know, it, 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 it goes back to the family I chose to, to come in with in this life. Uh, my, my dad was a holistic optometrist, one of the you know, forerunners of, of behavioral optometry, developmental optometry, working with people with their eyes and vision, through exercise, and he also believes strongly in nutrition. Uh, our family medical doctor, who he'd refer people to if they had eye health problems for the nutritional side, uh, had had spent uh, 20 years in 
hospital-based nutritional research when like vitamin A was discovered and they're looking at the liver metabolism of the vitamin. Uh, and also energy medicine research with Steinmetz is a famous, uh, you know, a physicist, one of the top physicists of the 20th century uh, at, at uh, General Electric. We were in upstate New York where, where that was located. Uh, so, and I was named after him, Dr. Martin. My middle name is Martin. So I was related to to them and my mom, who was a registered nurse and, you know, reading Adele Davis and uh, making yogurt, you know, in the early 60s and, and uh, uh Dr. Martin would send us to certain farms to buy organic produce when that wasn't a thing. You know, there was no official uh, designation of organic produce. You couldn't find it in a, in a grocery store. Uh, and then go to certain a certain shop for fish, uh, the fish, this certain fish market where they were bringing up fish from Long Island Sound instead of fish from the Hudson River, which later you know, became illegal, illegal. But at that time, you know, no, if you were buying fish in the regular store, you didn't know if it had how much PCBs it had in it or, you know, it was a serious, serious issue. You know, we have a lot more regulation of the quality of food and environment now than we had back in the 60s. Uh, Dr. Martin in 1960 was, I, I remember as, as a kid in his practice, I remember him firing a patient because they wouldn't stop smoking cigarettes. And this is back when, you know, cigarettes were still doing commercials saying, well, nine out of 10 physicians recommend whatever it was, Lucky Strikes or something. Uh, so he was just so far ahead of his time. I knew that that was the way that medicine needed to be. And I was very interested in nutritional medicine and energy medicine, uh, you know, along the lines of my dad, my mom and, and, and our doc, family doctor. When it got when it got to time to uh, looking at going to medical school, I was actually a better student than my you know classmate friends who were going to go to medical school. I could have easily gotten in, but you know what? I I decided ah, that is not the route for me because I want to do nutrition. I want to do healing. I want to do nutritional medicine. I want to do energy medicine, working with the body to heal itself naturally rather than invasively. You know, like the thought of that you're healing the body with, well, surgery is sometimes necessary for survival, but but it's it it doesn't actually make us healthier. It's 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 an acceptance of defeat that oh well you know your gallbladder is so bad we can't heal it we got to take it out, uh, or replace that hip joint or you know take out the lens in your eye because you have a cataract and we're going to put in a plastic lens now to replace it. Uh, that's not healing. It's you know it's. <laughs> uh, and, and drugs are not healing. Drugs are, you know, basically patent medicine. Uh, the Rockefellers and Carnegie's 100 years ago did a, a study, they commissioned a study to see how they could take over medicine and make the most money. And and the, the Flexner report came back saying, oh, well, uh, patent medicine, because the government has already decided that they'll use their force of arms, you know, threat, duress, coercion, and, and at gunpoint, enforce your patents for however many years, 18 years or whatever it is, you can have a monopoly. And, and the Rockefeller's ears perked up at that. They love monopoly. They already had a monopoly on oil, uh, petroleum, and, and then that expanded into uh, the railroads for, for transporting the oil. So now, you know, the commodity and the transport, what else can we, oh, we'll expand into medicine. Do you know that the first major, uh, 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 thing that the rock oil petroleum was sold for was as a medicine. Ew. Well, today, two thirds of our medicines are still made from that. <laughs> They're synthetic chemicals made from petrochemical source. But yeah, rock oil itself was the main competitor with snake oil. And uh, snake oil, well, we know what happened there that uh, snake oil was demonized, right? In, in the press, you know, so the Rockefellers, you know, took over the communication, the mass communication and said, snake oil is bad. These guys are charging a high price for this thing. And it, 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 rock oil is the thing that actually works. You want to want to drink that. <coughs> well, now, today, we, we actually know from the nutritional research of what is in snake oil. Snake oil turns out to be the highest substance in essential fatty acids. So that was the medicine. <laughs> It still is. I mean, it's expensive because how much oil can you get from a snake versus, you know, when it gushes out of the ground, it's cheap. 
So, so it's a crazy, crazy world. Uh, you know, I decided not to become a medical doctor, but to follow in my dad's profession of optometry because I knew that he had some colleagues who were, you know, uh, were not being suppressed by their profession, who were doing great research in nutrition uh, around eye disease, cataracts, glaucoma, macular degeneration, uh, actually, you know, receiving awards from their colleagues rather than losing their licenses for, for trying to treat something with, with uh, nutrition. And today, you know, it's, it's getting to be a little bit of a different story. We now have integrative medicine about what, three, four years ago was, was finally uh, brought into the, into the fold in the American Medical Association as an approved medical specialty. So, uh, you know, if, if I were going to school today, perhaps I would, would uh, go the medical route. But anyway, I, uh, I knew that I could do some good work in, in the field of vision. And uh, so when I was in optometry school in my last year of studies, I was actually diagnosed with glaucoma. So I, I, I was not really interested in the, the disease aspect, more in the healing, the exercise, nutrition, uh, how do we improve vision uh, for somebody who's had a head injury or a stroke or, or a child with learning problems where they can't get meaning out of what they see? But uh, that sort of brought the eye disease field front and center for me personally. It's like, oh, the ophthalmology professor who diagnosed me said, you're only 25. And you know what? The, the drugs and even surgery, you know, runs out of steam. It works a little bit to slow things down, but it doesn't stop the disease process. You're not removing the cause of disease with a drug or, or surgery. Um, and so in 25 years, by the time you're 50, you're going to be blind, most likely, even with, you know, the best standard of care, medical care that we have at, at that time. It's still about the same now. Um, so so that, uh, that brought my research on eye disease and, and prevention and reversal of eye disease really on the, on the front burner. Uh, my, first, my first office was a, a research practice in Tokyo, Japan. And while I was there, I got to uh, give a presentation to the doctors in Japan uh, who were interested in nutrition in an international organization. And uh, so I gave a, I did a lot of research to prepare for that. And that really got me started. When I got back to the States, I, I wanted to practice with my dad. Uh, so I did that uh, in, in the mid 80s and just was in, in upstate New York, you know, had access to all kinds of great seminars, alternative doctors teaching throughout New England, New York area. Uh, so pretty much every weekend I was learning another another aspect. So uh, we we're doing, you know, doing blood tests, but then taking the blood test results and running it through a computer algorithm to see not just well, you know what's clinically normal. They say you know if you're if you're in the in the furthest five percent of the population, then that's it's tagged as high or low on a blood test. That's so you have to be worse than ninety five percent of the clinical population. These are the people who are going to doctors because they have a problem. So so that's why you know you can go to a doctor and have as you're saying uh, you know routine. Uh, at SMAC type of blood test, 20, 24, however many uh, different things, material substances that you're measuring in the blood. And you have a symptom and the doctor will say, well, you know, everything's normal, which means you're not worse than the other ni next 19 people who walk into the office with a problem. And if it gets worse, come back and we'll test. Maybe we'll see something then. So our sensitivity of getting in meaningful information in standard medical testing is very, is way too low to deal with health. You know, we only deal with disease. So what we were doing is taking those, those standard tests, but then running them through a computer system that would look at patterns because, hey, you know, if, if these handful of tests are all on the high side, none of them are out of the clinically normal range, but they're all moving in that same direction, there's a pattern there. There's a flow. There's it, just like uh, talking about uh, uh, in Oriental medicine, you know, with the muscle tester, and they're saying, "Oh, you got dampness." These kinds of patterns, <clears throat> like we look at in, in Oriental medicine or other traditional kinds of medicines, homeopathy, uh, those are, are are so significant because they look at the individual and how 
you know, you could have two people with the same diagnosis or the same symptom, but the underlying cause and the underlying patterns of function and dysfunction could be very, very different. And therefore the treatment where, you know, in Western medicine, the treatment usually winds up being the same thing. It's the you know drug of the day. We call it conventional medicine because you go to a convention and find out which drugs are, are, are supposed to be good this year. By next year, you'll know what the side effects are. And then, so you need a new drug that doesn't, isn't tainted by uh, what's in the PDR. Uh, literally had a, a, a patient one time say they talked to the doctor, you know, the doctor was recommending a drug to them. They said, well, but I'm concerned about, you know, look at all the side effects that are listed in the PDR, you know, and the doctor literally said to them, oh, well, if you read that, you know, you wouldn't take any of these drugs. It's like, yes, <laughs> he's on to something. <laughs> you, you know, let me, I want to add something that my, my daughter and I were watching um, a show. And, you know, commercial comes on, it's a drug commercial, right? She's 12 in a couple of weeks, right? And she looks at me, she goes, all right, dad, so, you know, you get rid of a rash, but you have chronic diarrhea, you have itching in your groin, because, I mean, this is all the things, right? You have night sweats, you have the potential to have a stroke, and you have the potential to have um, a heart attack, right? But you got rid of your rash. Because I don't understand. I'd rather itch. And it's just that our whole... And this is interesting what you're saying, because I, I, I think a lot of us don't understand that we can ask our own bodies, you know, what we're doing. If we, if we really, you know, I, I'm a big fan of, of journaling and writing everything down, right, and keeping track of things. And, and I was having trouble sleeping and I was peeing nonstop, right? And I realized, wait a second, I'm drinking water up until 7.30 at night. I'm eating dinner at 8.30. It's a pound of vegetables. Gee, I wonder why. I can't sleep, right, through the whole thing. So what you do, you do process of elimination, and you know this from wellness and health. I eliminated all that, started eating dinner at 6.30, and I get up at 1 o'clock in the morning now, and I'm like, what's different? Oh, I don't have to be. Oh, I get it. And I think that leads to, because I love the background, the passion, and everything else. What is wellness? Because that's something, because we come to somebody like you for wellness, but then I think people don't have their own communication with their own body and understand their own wellness. You know, I, I think our minds, uh, this is a lot of questions in it. Let's start with wellness, but then I wanna go to the power of the mind too. There, there's so many things that I, I kind of have jotted down on yeah. top of it, yeah. but why don't we go wellness first? Because um, it's amazing because you got glaucoma at such a young age and you know, it, it's, you know, you read anything on the internet, you Google, well, if you get macular degeneration, you'll lose your eyesight in 10 years. But then again, who are these people and what's the study from? Glaucoma, the same thing, right? But but who are these people and where did the study come from? And, you know, the Google doctors, which I call most people are Google doctors, right? The Google doctors go and they don't understand that there's a wellness plan to preserve your health, right? Beneath the surface of all the statistics from all the doom, all the Western medicine doctors that, that prescribe the drugs and give you the diagnosis that scares the bejesus out of you. So wellness, and I'm leading up to this, what is wellness? Because I know it's a very expansive mind, body, a lot of mindset, a lot of connecting to your own source, but add into that, you know, wellness, your definition of wellness. Yeah, it's, I mean, it has to be something more than just, well, I don't have any diagnosis, right? Or even I'm symptom free. Uh, people who come to me have come to me over the years with a recent diagnosis of cancer, you know, usually fairly advanced cancer, and they're like, they're in shock because they thought that they were the, had the best, highest level of wellness of anybody around them. Why? Because what they said, I didn't even get the flu for, the last 10 or 20 years and other people around me were sick, you know, once, twice a year, I, I didn't get sick at all. So there's something that we're missing in our, our conception of what is health? What's the dynamics of health? Why is it that, that people who get a fever once or twice a year are less likely to get that diagnosis of, of cancer? Because the fever is not the problem, the fever is not the, the real, not the disease, it's a symptom. What is a symptom? A symptom is an expression of our immune system doing something. Inflammation is caused by the immune system, right? And 
we have systems that reduce inflammation as well. The, the adrenals in particular are the counterbalancing. Everything is counterbalanced in the body. So the, the thymus, the immune system promotes inflammation. So we have a lot of, we need inflammation in order to cleanse our body. Interesting. Out. And when we have a, a flu reaction, say it's a, a gut flu, and we have diarrhea, and oh, it's, it's very uncomfortable. So we call that disease, right? And okay, we can say that's disease, but it's also the prevention of other chronic disease because that acute reaction is the body's way of cleaning out that tissue. If it's a virus that's triggering it, okay, it was exposed to a virus, intestinal flu, boom, the immune system reacts and the actual symptoms are not caused by the virus, but by the immune reaction. And the immune reaction is not just to the virus, it's to the tissue that's affected and it has a generalized cleansing effect. So we have to really turn our thinking around about what is wellness and versus what is disease? What's the meaning of a symptom? If we if we uh, were to, to be able to uh, find a, a, a something that would totally cure and prevent colds and flus, we'd wind up with a lot more cancer. So, do we want to do that? You know, we've had recent uh, you know vaccinations uh, developed for coronavirus. That's the cold. If, if I remember my mentors 30 years ago saying, hey, if they ever come up with a cure for the common cold, watch out. We're going to see a lot more cancer. What are we seeing now? We're seeing a lot more cancer just in the last year or so. Uh, so, so we need to work with the body. And if we have a symptom, realize there's two ways to treat that. We can suppress it. We can suppress the immune system. We can stop the healing process that's represented by that symptom, or we can support the completion of the healing process. Either one of those is going to end the symptoms, reduce the symptoms, end the symptoms. But in one case, we wind up deeper in the hole of, of susceptibility for disease. And the other case, we come out of it actually healthier than at the start of the, the illness, the symptoms. Okay, so I have a question on that. So it's interesting, right? Because take diarrhea, take it, you know, as, as a cleansing thing, there are bouts, I mean, I've had like on and off three weeks of it, you know, and if you Google it, it tells you, go see your doctor, right? But I mean, I haven't had it every single day. I've had it maybe four times in three weeks. So what I kind of look at it in, in the wellness way I've been taught was my body's going through some type of cycle right now where it's really triggered by something, right? where it's sensitive, it's trying to purge and get rid of something, things are irritating it. And I might have an underlying virus that's just sticking in me a little bit longer. It doesn't mean that I am unhealthy. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that this is a cycle I need to deal with and to go through and to allow my body to repair and maybe be a little more, you know, this is something that I've always talked to people about. If something is triggering your body, and you're feeling it for a month, get rid of, learn the trigger, get rid of the trigger, don't eat that trigger, okay, and let your body heal the way it needs to naturally heal because it's doing something because our bodies, and I know you know this, our bodies are amazing, amazing healing, healing, but we, you know, anybody gets a stomachache and they get it for a week or two, they're sucking down Pepto-Bismol and they're not, you know, and I'm, I'm taking charcoal, <laughs> you know, I'm taking charcoal to, you know, to, eat up the, the whatever is in there, you know, to to cleanse, to help cleanse it, to do that. And people, like I was talking to my aunt, she goes, oh, just take my lantern, this and that. I said, no, that's going to stop it. And then it's not going to let me heal. So it's just, and I think people don't understand that. And I love that we, the way you talk about wellness, you know, it's not like a catastrophe thing. But then I, I look at a question you sent me, what is susceptibility? And that's something that, you know, I don't think a lot of people understand and, and know about. Yeah, the, uh, you know the like the difference you're talking about is you know you using a, a a healing tool like like the charcoal that's a binder because why what is what is diarrhea the body's eliminating something yep. it's we have to start with the acceptance that body's way more intelligent than the conscious mind. 
conscious mind can process, you know, they estimate 120 bits a second or whatever. It's a very small amount that our mind can process. And yet what is, you know, the, the, the standard medical approach is, is we look at the symptoms. That's what the conscious mind of the patient is aware of and communicated to the conscious mind of the doctor. And the doctors can use his conscious mind and scientific training with that limited processing ability to measure 20 things in the blood uh, out of the 10,000 things that are in the body and more than that, hundreds of thousands of, of different chemicals in the body. Uh, so, so we're working on very small, very limited amount of data where the body, every cell in the body is, is operating on so much more information because it doesn't have to be, you know, at an organismic consciousness level. And yet the conscious level is, is super critical in guiding us as, as the being, as an organism in our choices of how we're going to, how we're going to treat ourselves. Uh, so, so accepting that our body is intelligent and real looking at the dis, finer distinctions of not just, Oh, I have a symptom. Well, you could, you could have constipation or you could have diarrhea is, is one worse than the other. You know, from a medical point of view, it's just, okay, that's just, there's the problem. We're going to treat that if we, you know, if we, if we get the bowels moving or we slow down the bowels movement to, to the right timing. Now, now we're, we've normalized it or blood pressure, blood pressure is high. Oh, we got to bring it down. But have we, have we solved the problem? Why is the blood pressure high in the first place? Is it, is the blood pressure really the problem or is it an attempt at solution the blood pressure is usually high because the blood is thick, it's toxic. It's, it's not filtering through the kidneys, which are the high pressure filter system very easily. So the heart, which is the pump to create that pressure has to create more pressure to try to clean the blood. Now we're going to put in a toxin that slows down, that ramps down the, the heart's ability to produce that blood pressure. So we're going to do, get less filtering of the blood to clean out the toxins. Plus we've added a new toxin. So now we're more toxic. There was a study in, in England where they didn't just ask the conscious mind of the doctor, how is the patient doing? But they also asked the patient, the family of the patient, the people in the community. And all the doctors said, patients are better on the blood pressure medication. Look at the numbers. Look, hey, it was 190. Now it's 120. Uh, it's normal. It's great. But the patients, their family, and everybody in the community all agreed with themselves and totally disagreed with the doctor's assessment. They said, no, this person's not as well. It's not, has less energy, less functional. They're not doing well. So we have to take a, a holistic view uh, in order to, to, you know, not get thrown off, off track by, you know, like population studies on, on drugs, okay? And they call they'll they'll do a study on a thousand you know thousand Chinese uh, men in, in university because it's cheap to do a study there, <laughs> and say well based on this and your blood pressure, this this drug is going to work to reduce your blood pressure. It's not going to make you healthier. It's not going to solve the problem of having toxic blood. And 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 they'll call that evidence based medicine. But where's the evidence? There's there's no evidence that's making making you healthier overall. It, there's there's no evidence that this drug is compatible for your body, right? It's about evidence about a thousand other people, and so some of those people had had side effects, had problems. You know, they all had the tox toxic effects of it. You know, reducing the the health of the body. It's actually, uh, you know, if if we did a really full study, we'd find out what other diseases, like we find out over the years, drugs have side effects and, you know, you wind up having ads saying, hey, if you have know somebody who, you know, took this drug and they had these you problems, the talk to these lawyers and you may be, you know, you may, maybe we can pay you some money for that. Well, health, your health isn't worth it to, to risk for, for taking, putting toxins in the body just to manipulate symptoms and make us more susceptible to other, other health problems down the line. So then disease. You know, we live in a, we have diseases now that we didn't have a hundred years ago. We have eye diseases that didn't exist a hundred years ago. We have 
um, cancers that are out of control that were not around 100 years ago. We have um, obesity. Like, I, I mean, I live in the South now. My jaw drops sometimes. And I go to a Walmart. And they go wash for falling prices. And I look at the people and I'm like, oh, my God. It's like in the falling prices and the food they're grabbing and the weight that they're carrying. And my heart just goes out to them, you know. And I see these children yeah. now. I see seven-year-old kids now. I mean, it took me, God, I mean, I'm a skinny beanpole, you know. And they mean, I'm like six two and a half, 162 pounds. I mean, it's like, you know, muscle and, 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 and bone. I mean, that's all I've ever been. And I look at some of these kids that are nine and 10 years old and they they weigh what I weigh and they can barely move. So disease is, is, I look at, you know, one of the questions you put to me is what is disease? And what comes to me is Walmart, Costco, you know, um, Kroger, um, Target. You know, it's like, what is, you know, Amazon, you know, it's like, you know, the Amazon Prime, here's your box of disease, you know. So that's how I look at disease now is just, well, it's all manufactured from the foods. The, I had a farmer client of mine that came into town for the weekend, you know, to visit. And he, he, he does canola oil, you know, which is just about like, you know, why don't you just go drink some canola oil and just go develop some type of, you know, third eye that's coming out of your head because it's a tumor. So what is disease now? Because that, that's my definition of disease. You know, it's like all the toxic foods and, and the, the human beings. And I look at them and you get on a plane and you see the things they're eating and the food they're giving out on an airplane for an hour long flight. They're giving you this disgusting processed stuff to put in your body. And I, I just look at people and I think to myself, you're going to die. So, and so the, the, I think of disease as being basically two factors uh, when you boil it all down. It, there's, there's too much of something that's toxic, that's damaging to us. It could be trauma, physical trauma, you know, uh, uh, or, and or not enough of the, the nutrients, the good things, the good energies and, and substances that, that we need in order to heal that trauma and toxicity. So, you know, we cut ourselves, we need uh, nutrients to form the granul granulation tissue to, to heal in that cut. And the body, the body heals itself if it has the right ingredients available. So, you know, since we've destroyed our diet with re food refining and, uh, you know, and genetically altering the, the yeah. foods, we've lost over 95% of the heirloom varieties of foods. And even if you don't talk, look at genetically modified organisms that are making toxins, pesticides in them, just looking at the, the, the hybridization of foods, like with uh, wheat in, in, in the, you know, in the third, 1930s, the Dust Belt, uh, they, they modified all the wheat to where it could withstand more drought, but it made it less nutritious and more allergenic. Uh, so our foods have lost over 90% of all of the phytochemicals that they once had. Uh, and then, the, and on top of that, they're being refined and processed and stored and additives added to them. So the diet is a big, big factor, like with macular degeneration, the leading cause of ir ir supposedly irreversible blindness, which we help people reverse, uh, it didn't exist before the 1850s. So with mechanization of food processing, refining of grains in the late 1800s, uh, you know, uh, the oils, the, like all the, the vegetable oil. You know, vegetable oil uh, is this beautifully clear, crystalline looking substance. And you say, oh, well, that's pure, I, I, I should eat that. And actually, to some degree, that's been happening in commerce for a couple thousand years where oils, vegetable oils would be would be filtered. So they'd be clear, and beautiful to the eye, like a like a crystal. But the, the, the truth is, the this material that's being filtered out is 
essential is most essential for our health the, the phytosterols the plant fats that are are a little bit less soluble so they they look stringy and cloudy in that oil like if you get a, a whole flax oil that's not filtered it, it'll have that you know it's not quite pure and clear looking yeah well that's what we we need the whole food we need the whole oil we need all the nutrients that are made in the whole plant uh, and so we've been depriving ourselves of the most critical nutrients that aren't even considered vitamins because there's no acute deficiency disease. It's a chronic deficiency disease. Blindness. Oh, you're going to go blind when you get old. So it's not a vitamin? No, no, no. It's not a vitamin because there's no acute deficiency disease. <laughs> you know, it's we, we need to upgrade our thinking with our, you know, limited brain capacity. It's crucial that we understand that, that we need this broader range of natural substances that are in a whole food diet from heirloom plants grown organically uh, and fresh, preferably fresh produce, not, you know, shipped from South America or something because uh, it, it all and, and then not not cooked. Now, a lot of foods are maintain more of their nutrition when they're not cooked. You have enzymes and B vitamins that are heat labile that break down with heat. Uh, you know, if you, if you steam or, or uh, cook vegetables uh, in, in water, the water is going to extract most of the nutrients. And then we throw away the, the nutrients in the, the steam water uh, and, and just we're left with being the most overfed and undernourished people in, in the history of the world. So you see that, that Walmart type of uh, body type that's getting plenty of calories. That's not, it's calories are not the problem. The problem is the deficiency of the nutrients and then exposure to 70,000 toxins that never existed in their genetic history. Our body has, has no way, uh, you know, it's not developed historically, genetically to be able to handle whether those are prescription toxins or whether they're over-the-counter toxins or whether they're food additive toxins or whether they're airborne pollutant toxins, they're just uh, everywhere we're being exposed to them. So we have less of the nutrients we need to handle the detoxification of the increased toxic exposure. We've turned acute illness into chronic illness, you know, with vaccination, you take, you know, the normal childhood illnesses that are actually part of the development of the normal healthy immune system, we've now suppressed that at birth, you know, however many injections, it's a crazy number. And then when I was when I was a kid, if there was one child who had a chronic illness, asthma or something in the classroom, it's like, oh, what's wrong with that kid? Today, it's half of the class is on medication with chronic illness, the, the, the childhood cancer rates, the, you know, the ADD and the drugs for that. Don't, again, don't, don't cure, don't remove the cause. There's toxicity in the system and the body's trying to, to fight to, with inflammation in the brain to, you know, to push that out and putting more toxins in to control the behavior. It's just managing the symptoms with drugs, but it's creating susceptibility for other health problems down the line. And that's great for the pharmaceutical industry. They do well when there's chronic illness because you have symptoms, you have complaints, and you will do anything to try to minimize those. But <clears throat> an illustration of the, the real, the real trade-off there is even as something as simple as an aspirin for a headache. When they did a study on it, they found the people who took an aspirin for their headache now had more headaches in the future than the people who just had the headache and didn't take an aspirin. Yeah, the, the Aspirin reduces the headache. It sure does. But does it make you healthier? No, it doesn't improve wellness. It reduces wellness. It increases susceptibility to that th same thing that you're treating. It's suppressive. You're, it's like you're pushing it back in. The body's trying to dissolve something. The immune system uses inflammation to dissolve and break down toxins. It uses elimination symptoms, whether it's a runny nose or diarrhea or increased urination or sweating. These are elimination symptoms. So when we look at the nature of a symptom, if it's elimination, well, your body's trying to get something out that doesn't belong inside. So we say better out than in. It doesn't mean you don't need to 
to do something, you know, you can lose too many electrolytes with diarrhea and, and that can be a serious problem. So we do need to support the process, you know, uh, but uh, with, with something like high blood pressure, instead of just reducing the blood pressure and saying, yeah, problem solved, you're not going to blow a gasket, you know, uh, but wait, what about the toxic blood? You've just made the problem worse. And, and again, the people in the community and the family and the patient himself says, I don't feel so good. I don't have enough energy now. Oh. <laughs> so we need to support the kidneys to clean the blood better or support the gut to make less toxic blood because most of the toxins in the blood come from the gut. So, so microbiome, we're finding out in medis medical research that before there's chronic illness, one of the most sensitive indicators of susceptibility of, of wellness is the microbiome. When we start losing our microbiome, the, the, the friendly bacteria that are outnumber our own cells because they're smaller than ours, uh, when we start losing that biodiversity, it's interesting we are that... heading for trouble. And we can see that way before the disease is diagnosable. You know, it's interesting. Um... You look at people and they, they well, they have their vegetables, you know, they, they went and they, you know, went to this restaurant and they had the okra that was, you know, cooked for 17 hours and they got their vegetables. And as you know, that does nothing to do with nutrients or anything else. Broccoli, because I get to be crisp, right? But I put my greens, I mean, I put my vegetables in an air fryer for 30 seconds, 30, well, not the broccoli, 30 seconds. What it does is it heats it, wilts it. And then I pull it out, right? No water gets into it, nothing. It's all moist. It's like all the water that's at yeah. supposed to be in there is in there. All the nutrients, you know, I keep it because. Yeah, it's waterless. Yeah. But you're, you know, it's interesting what you said with the, um, a lot of people when they do get the symptom, you know, and, you know, they don't understand that the body is, in, and this is something that, you know, I've always found or just looked at is that, you know, as long as our head doesn't get in the way, the elimination won't last. If the head starts thinking about it, the elimination will last three times longer than it's supposed to last. How come I can't get rid of this cold? I've had this cold for weeks because you keep thinking about it. You know, the cold is just, as you put it very well, all this stuff is just your body saying, you know, on a deeper level, which I'm interpreting on a deeper level, it actually is healing something more so than making you sick. But yet our systematic way of, of medicine in this country is that we don't look at the fact that we're eliminating. We're looking at the fact that we're sick and we must do something to mask that sickness. So with that in mind, then what initiated propelled the line of exploration of accelerated self-healing? Because I think that's a really good segue to the next question, because you know, if, if people are following, which they should be, you know, you're the next time you don't feel good. Think of it as an accelerated self healing on a much deeper level. Think of what you needed to eliminate. And it is going to come out one way or the other. It's going to come out with your nose. It's going to come out through your butt. It's going to come out through your, you know, whatever, you know, it's just going to sweat it out. You're going to have fever. So what initiated propelled this line of exploration of accelerated self healing for you? So a, a big factor uh, was, I mentioned how I was researching all different kinds of, of alternative medicine. The huge breakthrough for me came in studying with a, a naturopath from Canada uh, in the field of European biological medicine, uh, energy medicine. I, uh, I had a mouthful of silver amalgam fillings, so I knew there was a lot of mercury in there. And I suspected that I had, that that was a problem, that, that maybe that was even part of the underlying problem with, with my vision. And uh, so I did trace mineral hair analysis. No mercury showed up in the hair. When, when uh, my mentor tested me electronically, measuring my body's re response to mercury energetically, said, oh, uh, that's, this is a, a real problem because you are a non-excreter. And it's like, that's true. My body was not excreting mercury in the hair, and that's an excretion tissue. Uh, urine didn't show mercury. That's an excretion tissue. So I know it's coming out of these fillings. There's 14 of them. They're huge. Yeah. I've had them for years and years. And so it's building up in my tissues. 
is going to the eye. We know from studies in Sweden, the lens of the eye stores mercury longer than any other tissue in the body. We know it goes to the brain. We know it goes to the pancreas. That was a big place affected for me. The thyroid gets a higher level of mercury from the dental source than any other tissue. So it's going everywhere in the body. And my body was not strong enough to eliminate it. So it was just piling up. So uh, the blood tests related related blood tests uh, called bioelectronics of Vinson, it measures the physics of the blood, the electrons, the protons, and the ions that carry energy in the blood. And that study compared to hundreds of thousands of people that have been studied for the last hundred years, mostly in Europe, uh, as the people you know were sick or healthy or becoming healthy or becoming sick, comparing to the clinical population, my blood showed that I was, I was going to die of a stroke. I was about 30 years old, and I had less than 10 years life expectancy based on my blood tests. Uh, so that, uh, you know, our bodies are always healing, always doing their best to heal with what they have available, uh, what they're facing and what resources they have. So the only way to, to overcome that is to heal faster than you're falling apart. So I was like an old person in my 30s, like, I need to rejuvenate. I need to cleanse my body. I need to get out the source. So it took a year to, to change all those fillings uh, with non-toxic materials uh, and, and support the cleansing of the body during that time. Uh, and the same process then we've applied to tens of thousands of people since then and help people to overcome. Like I didn't die in my 30s of a stroke. I did have some transient ischemic attacks, which are small strokes, uh, where I lose part of my vision temporarily. Wow. I sometimes couldn't remember my own name or my phone number that was the same number since childhood. Uh, you know, so some some definitely notable symptoms. Uh, you know, friends would say, "Well, you're getting older." Uh, yeah, that, ha- I, that that kind of thing happens to me too. You know, in my thirties, we we're getting older. So wait a minute, age is not a cause. That's like saying. Space, space time is the cause. Yeah, let's get a little more specific because <laughs> we can't do anything about time, but we can change our biological age. At that time, my, my biological age at age 30 was like in my 60s. And then uh, a few years later, when I was uh, working at a naturopathic school on the West Coast, studying and teaching there, uh, a, a classmate had the same instrument and was able to test me. And I was then like my biological age was a couple of years younger than my chronological age. So identified the source, remove the cause of the problem. Step one, if you can, you can't, it's not always possible, but sometimes like in my case, there's a specific thing that we're doing to ourselves that is aging us faster than our body can heal and repair and rejuvenate. You know, it's interesting. Given the right, I want, yeah. I want to share that because it's the same thing. Um, I remember I got all my mercury removed, and then I was going into the dentist, probably 2011, and um, she was working on a tooth, and she goes, "Oh, we're going to lose the tooth. We got a root canal." And I'm like, "No root canal. Rip it out, right? No, we're going to save the tooth. Save the tooth." And it just everything about it felt so wrong, Glenn. It was just it mm-hmm. didn't feel right. So I let her do two root canals, you know, didn't feel right. And um, sure enough, you know, I go to, you know, as you know, I went to Costco and they said I have early stage macular degeneration. I'm like, well, how do I have that? Somebody who's absolutely has zero. If you look at like the person who would have it, there's not one thing, I, a box I check off. And then I started researching it more and I realized dental, <laughs> dental. Macular Seriously. degeneration, as you know, for any eye disease, is really just heart disease of the eyes. I mean, so it's either dripping down or dripping up, right? So it's a lot faster to go mm-hmm. from here to there than it is to there. My, you know, so I went and, and got them removed, and I had just like you yep. when they did a biopsy of my gu- of my jaw. I mean, I was nineteen and twenties. I mean, it was like I was a stroke and heart attack waiting to happen. I mean. And, you know, then, you know, now it's, it, it's taken, that was what, two summers ago that I went and did that. So it takes your body, as you know, 
some years to like, you know, finally realize, hey, this is no longer in. You know, I got another one removed. You know, I had another tooth thing, you know, a, a wisdom tooth that had decay. And they said, we can fix it. Yes, you can. Rip it out. Put the platelets in. And, and I'll have no teeth back there. Because as you know, and this is what a lot of people don't understand, the dentist is evil. You know, Western dentists, they, they just, they're saving a tooth. Well, really? That thing was so black when they took it out. That was saving a tooth. You, you know. You might as well just, if I break my arm, why don't you just put somebody else's bone in there and then just not fix it, right? And see what happens to your arm a few years later. So I know in my heart that that caused that temporary setback. You know, you like how I reframed it, right? You know, doing some work with you on the e-box and everything else, that's a temporary setback. And mm -hmm. um, I am loving awareness, which, you know, I'll say whenever I have a negative thought that comes to my mind, I. I What's his name? Yeah. Oh, God, you know who him, uh, Ramdas, right? You know, whenever anything negative comes to your mind, you just think, I am loving awareness, you know, because you are, you're loving how aware you are in that moment. And it really just unloops your brain. But it's interesting because you, and, and this leads to the next question, right? Because I know how it saved your life because you just said it. But the five phases of healing and disease, because as we get something, you know, as human beings, you know, oh my God, you've got macular degeneration. Oh my God, you have heart disease. Oh my God, you have this. We'll get rid of it right away. Well, you know, it could take, it took years to get you to that point. It could take years to get you out of that point, you know, but that's where I think people need to understand there's that patience that they don't have. And that's why medicine, Western medicine has just been so good feeding it. Here, take this magic pill, because we're a magic pill society. Take this magic pill. Oh, take this magic pill, you make a million dollars. Take this magic pill, you're going to be fine. Take this magic pill. But, you know, you're 60 years old, 55 years old, and it took you 55 years to get your eyes in that condition. It could take you 55 years to get your eyes in better condition. But then again, you live to 110 and you saw perfectly clearly. So okay. I think a lot of people don't understand that. So maybe if you uh, go through the five phases of healing and disease and uh, walk people through that, I think that would be really fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, let's start with the theoretical state of perfect balanced health. How do we get out of balance? Well, the first thing is stress, any kind of stress, psycho-emotional stress, physical stress, trauma, stress of, of you know, a, a, stress on the food supply of diet. Uh, so when we're stressed, we, if we look at human tissue and the toxins in human tissue, fully half of the toxins stored in our tissue are the breakdown products of our response to stress. Stress hormones, stress neurotransmitters, they don't fully just release and break down into nothing and escape the body. They can, if it's chronic stress or a really strong acute stress, they impact us, they get stuck in the tissues, we store that impact. And so that's what first tends to throw us out of balance. It, it, again, hormones, neurotransmitters of stress. Uh, so that becomes toxic in the body. The, I have a numbering system. So we're gonna start at phase five, that's balance. So stress throws us out of balance down to phase four, level four health. I, I oriented it like we're used to in a classroom, we wanna get a higher grade, right? So we wanna get back to that level five health of, of true wellness and balance and dealing with stress you know, on, a, on an ongoing basis as it comes up and not storing it. So if we're knocked down to level four, we're dealing with toxicity. So phase four, I call cleanse, cleansing, because what do we do? We have toxins, we need to cleanse them. If they're building up faster than they're then we're getting them out, now we're becoming toxic. So the symptoms in that phase four terrain are allergy symptoms and toxicity symptoms, like, like say a diarrhea or like a eye allergy um, uh, or high, high blood pressure or heart attacks happen in that high stress level toxic, toxins are in the blood, blood's going through the heart, uh, heart can't handle it. If we build up enough to where there, there's so many toxins in the tissue that the cells can't survive, we have now, or, or the, the waste material can't get out, it's just blocked up. Now we have dead matter in the tissue. 
what grows on dead matter? If you think about a forest, Bold. you see a, a dead branch, a dead tree, fungus, right? So, so fungus is part of our microbiome in the body, and it, its function is to break down dead matter to help us recycle. If our body could do it with our own enzymes, then we don't need the fungus. But if we provide the dead matter and don't have the flow to, to get that out of the system, <clears throat> now we get into phase three terrain, which is fungal terrain. If we turn that around, it's regenerative terrain. We make the space by removing the dead matter, space and energy to make more cells to re, rege regenerate the full tissue. From, from phase three, the, the problems go inside the cell. Phase, phase two is where the enzymes in the cell are blocked. We've got now metabolic problems. Uh, we've got energy problems. We've got problems being able to make the things that we need to make to, to repair the enzymes. To, we need enzymes to make enzymes. If we don't have enough digestive enzymes to break down the proteins, we don't have the amino acids to build the digestive enzymes or to build the cellular enzymes. Uh, so that's phase two. And then phase one, called low energy terrain, uh, energized terrain, where now there's so little energy in the cell, the cell is not structuring water on the outside of the cell. And so even viruses can now gain access to the cell. A virus cannot get at a he healthy cell. Even in phase two, we can have bacterial issues, parasite issues, because they have enzymes to break down food that we're not breaking down with our enzymes. But in phase one, and there's no shield of structured of living water on the cell. A virus has no moving parts. It can't swim. It's just attracted to a low energy cell. It's pushed away from a healthier cell. Phase two and above. So um, that's also where we get chronic degenerative disease and ultimately cancer is where there's just not enough energy to break down, not even breaking down uh, sugar into carbon dioxide and water. We're breaking it down into there's still carbon-carbon bonds, there's sludge inside the cell, the cell gets filled up with the sludge, and it has to make another cell to store more stuff. The cancer cell is not a cell that's trying to kill the body, it's a cell that's protecting the body from the stuff that it's storing until it gets access to enough energy and nutrients to, to start cleansing and breaking down. And then, and then that cancer cell will start detoxifying, it may restore its ability to break down the cell, the uh, apoptosis, the natural cell death, when there's ability to release what's in there and, and knowing that the body can handle it. In 3,000 cases on record of spontaneous remission of cancer, which is not spontaneous at all, it's, it's when the conditions are produced to, for the immune system and the body to be able to heal itself, you get fever, you get a high fever which is a symptom of, of like bacterial infection and phase two terrain. When you've, in every case of spontaneous remission of cancer, you've gone from phase one, low energy terrain to the next higher energy level of terrain where bacteria are making enzymes and we ourselves are making enzymes again. And we have enough energy to produce for the immune system to produce a high fever. And we are able to cleanse those toxins out of, you know, it can even be metastatic cancer that's gone in three days. It's oh, wow. amazing the capacity of the body to heal itself when the conditions are right. So it's the terrain, the conditions. It's like if you have a garden, what's the pH of the soil? What's the, what's the nutri nutrition you're giving the plants? That, the sunlight, the energy, the material, the, the, you know, the, the positive thoughts that you're giving it, the attention, the care that you're giving to the garden is going to determine what grows. And, you know, do you have a green thumb? There really is, there really is positive energy from thoughts. Thoughts are energy forms and they have an effect on living things like ourselves. So, uh, so phase two, you can, you can heal cancer in a few days. Phase three, you can regenerate, like take the liver, the largest internal organ. You can re surgically remove 98% of the, of the liver. And if the body's healthy, that 2% can regenerate to a full 100% yeah, liver. That. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and even parts of the body, you know, when I was in school, they said, well, the, the brain can't regenerate. The, the eye can't regenerate. Uh, you know, all these other parts can't regenerate. Why? Because they never saw it regenerate. We've seen it regenerate. Uh, we know now 
you know, there, there's, there's communication molecules in the body. Like the Russians did a bunch of studies during the Cold War. They had a lot of resources put into the, the medical uh, system in, in their military for, for rapid healing on, on the battlefield. You know, you're hit by trauma, lasers, whatever. How do you get that person back in function quickly? And they looked at the different tissues in the body, different organs, and they found peptides, little chains of two, two three, four amino acids that are specific to a certain organ, like the eye or the thyroid or the circulation, the brain, <clears throat> that would stimulate faster regeneration of that tissue. You still need to have the right terrain. You need that phase three terrain where there's enough energy for an existing cell to make two cells that are healthy and functional. So there's a definition of wellness. If you're in phase three regeneration terrain, wellness is having the capacity to, to clean, to clear the space out from dead, dead matter, waste stuff that, that's surrounding the cell and get the energy up in your cell to where it's double a normal healthy cell so it can make two normal healthy cells. That's, that's well-being. That's a lack of susceptibility. Okay, so phase four, we're cleansing the tissue. The, the connective tissue is the home of every cell. You know, here's a cell. Around it is collagen and different fibers and space-filling molecules. It, it's like a filter system. Any nutrients have to come from, from a blood vessel, from the capillary, filter through that connective tissue to the cell. Any waste have to filter out for, through the connective tissue to the capillary or to an open-ended lymph vessel for larger molecules to, to be removed from that tissue. So in, in cleansing terrain, phase four, we're now removing, again, the 50% of toxins that are from our own stress responses. And we can't help that, you know, we can, we can manage it, we can minimize it by not, not stressing, but, uh, and that's important, but, but we also can manage it by organizing our lives. So we're not putting ourselves in such stressful situations. So it's, but the ultimate toxicity is our own reaction to the stressful situation. Uh, so that's where the mind and the spirit is, is half of healing. It's, it's, we know it's half of, of healing from, from studying any, any drug study. They have to do a controlled study where the doctor doesn't know what, which is the drug and which is the placebo, and the patient doesn't know which is which, because if they know, that's equally as strong as anything the chemistry is going to do. Half of the power of pain relief from an opiate is from the psyche, from the mind, minding body, the, the spirit. Yeah, that, that, that's, am uh, that, that's yeah. amazing. I mean, because I've read about that, you know, and, I, you know, it's I do mantras, you know, um, every day in every way I'm getting better and better was my mantra for a while. And then I decided, let me get more specific every day in every way. My eyes are getting better and better. You know, and it's like, it's like all you're doing is just telling your body, okay, I'm accelerating because you just answered that, you know, question. You're accelerating yourself healing with your belief system. You know, you're accelerating yourself healing by the, and, and this is interesting. I was thinking the other day, I was taking a walk. I take a walk at night now. You know, why? Because when you eat dinner and you lay down, all you're doing is just letting all the sugars just go all over the place. And it's just going to keep you up all night long, right? You go take a 15 minute walk like the Europeans do right after dinner and you're, you're neutralizing your blood sugar and you sleep better, you know, because you're just getting the movement. Right. And it's interesting, you know, I was walking the other night and I thought to myself, well, what if somebody just said, you're, you're here, if I give you this, and, and this was an interesting thing. If you put a pin, in the side of your head and rotate it around in seven circles this way, 13 circles that way, up and down 14 times, and then chant Uga Booga, right? Your eyes are gonna be 100% healthy like they were when you were 10 years old if you do that for 60 days. And you know what's funny? If we did an experiment of that, probably half the people would heal from that. So it is the acceleration of self-healing is, um, is the trust in the person that's dispensing the healing, and then the trust in yourself that the healing is going to work. So this comes to the next question: If a symptom decreases, does that always mean we are healthier? 
Not at all. And that's the, the problem. If, if we're really in a high state of wellness, then, and we're not treating symptoms with things that are toxic, right. suppressive, like, like drugs, even over the counter, like aspirin, NSAIDs, steroid creams, we avoid that whole world and just use, stick to, you know, nutrients, herbs, homeopathy, energy medicine, like, you know, uh, light therapy, things like Love that, that uh, working with the mind, exercise, then, then we're going to, you know, stay in, in a healthy zone. Um, if we are not super balanced, now we have a, we have a symptom. Okay. If we treat it, like say the headache, we treat it with aspirin. The problem is we're, it's good for aspirin sales because the headache is going to come back because we didn't resolve it. We pushed it back in. Take uh, even a worst case scenario, antihistamines. Oh, my body's my have all this stuff coming out of my eyes and my nose and it's uncomfortable and sinuses are all inflamed and uh, I, I'm uncomfortable. Let me take an antihistamine. Oh, dries it up. Okay. Not okay. Why? The, the research shows when you do that, again, you're not, your body's trying to eliminate something. That's your immune system intentionally, intelligently detoxifying locally here in the eye and sinus area because it can't get those things out the kidneys. So it's, again, it's a, a deeper problem, the kidneys and the toxins from the gut. We need to clean up the whole body and then you don't have the allergy symptoms of phase four cleansing mode. Uh, but the long-term studies show when you use antihistamines, you're increasing your susceptibility, your risk factor for cancer in the sinuses and cancer in wow. the brain. You just shove whatever the crap was, your body's trying to get it out. Remember, it's a lot smarter than your conscious mind is. So it's doing something meaningful, something intelligent for your benefit. And you just said, no, that's stupid, stupid body. It's just trying to make me uncomfortable with an allergy reaction. I'm going to stop it. Uh oh, <laughs> you know, it, it's interesting. We're trying to stop instead of doing it. So then that leads to the question. And this is an interesting question. OK, because when you send me these questions, I ask myself all these questions, right? And then I meditated because I do um, I do my eye exercises in the morning. You'd be proud of that. My Qigong eye exercises, you know them, up and down, side to side, round circles, 60 of each. And then I do all my pressure, my Qigong points, boom, boom, you know, sides, underneath, massaging it. And because I believe in stimulating, I'm very much into all that, right? So... I'm also telling my body during that time, and then I do my Wim Hof uh, four rounds of breathing, which to me is the best meditation you can possibly do because you're not thinking of anything but holding your breath and breathing. So it's like you want to clear your mind, and then at night, you know, I, I get on the pulse machine and I do another meditation, right? And I can just visualize so many things, and that's something that I think, you know, as human beings, you know, and, and I teach, you know, me, I've coached for 24 years, You've got to prioritize one thing and really, really prioritize it. You know, I'm going to get better this week at one thing. As human beings, we want to get better at, you know, 75 things per week. But this week, this week, I want to get better at this one thing, right? And there's a book about it, too. And if you can do that, you start building what I, you know, this is just, I know it from my coaching and stuff. You build so much momentum going to the next week. Go, well, I got rid of that one. I worked on that thing one thing last week. Let me go work on this one thing. So the body, I feel, from talking to my body, um, I, um, like, I just feel like talking to my body, I feel like my body tells me what it wants to prioritize that week and what my mantra needs to be that week, you know? So um, how does the body, am I right? Or, you know, it's just working for me, but how do you conceptualize the body prioritizing its healing activities? Yeah, well, that's, you know, getting into intuition, which is kind of the, the link between that conscious mind or really definitely conscious of something versus the subtlety of, we kind of have a feeling, a gut feeling, you know, there's, there's, there's more, uh, there's, there's so much going on in the gut, in the heart, other, other organs uh, related to emotions. So, so tapping into our intuition, and as we get healthier, that intuition gets better and more accurate. 
So that's a, that is a, a, a critical way that we're able to navigate toward back toward health. Uh, when we test energetically, we find that the body overall will prioritize a certain definite, uh, a limited number of priorities, a d limited number of sources of imbalance that it's saying, uh, this I need to do right now. And once I clear that, now I can get to this other thing. It can, just like the mind can only multitask on so many things. You know, we're more efficient if we're just not multitasking at all. We're focused on that one thing. Uh, when we, when I used to travel with our equipment and stuff, can't do it now, but uh, go to health fairs in California and various places. And we'd see that, that even in different communities, the, the whole culture is, is very different as far as how much, how stressful it is, how much multitasking the body has to do just to live there. When I tested people at a health fair in Los Angeles, we never saw anyone with doing less than five things at once. And again, on a, wow. on a, on a body level, uh, and that's not horrible. Most people are there. Most people, most Americans today are, you know, that we see or have health, chronic health problems, trying to find resolution are trying to balance a bunch of things. Never saw one less than five. And finally, at the health fair in Los Angeles had somebody who came in and had, I think three, only three levels of stress that I could find. And I said, wow, you're the, you know, the least multitasking, least stressed person that I've tested in Los Angeles. I said, well, I just drove five hours from, you know, <laughs> out somewhere in rural California to get here. It's like, oh, okay, okay, <laughs> proves the point. <laughs> when we were in San Diego, it was more like three was typical. Uh, we'll see a, a little small town in Hawaii that, you know, like an hour, 45 minutes or an hour from here, that's a beautiful rural place where the people kind of, they sit down and talk story and have a tea with their neighbor in the afternoon. And, you know, it's like a whole different lifestyle. And there's usually one, they're not multitasking. They don't have, they don't have to do more than one thing at a time to get through their days. So, so that's a, a big factor. The most I ever saw was at 21. And this was a man who was dying uh, he was referred to us by his acupuncturist, couldn't get his pulses to come up, just very, very, very low pulses, low energy in the whole system, not healing. And they, they were doing a lot of good things, good energy medicine, in addition to oriental medicine, uh, you know, acupuncture, uh, moxibustion, other energy instruments, very advanced instruments, herbs. Uh, within one month of taking all of the remedies, and it was a lot of remedies, it's probably 25, 30 remedies that it took to balance those 21 different stresses that the body was trying to heal desperately, but didn't have the right materials. In this case, they were all material substances. It was like, oh, you need this herb, you need this nutrient, you need a bunch of that. You know, it was like we had to do the healing for the body by putting in the building blocks that were missing. Whereas if a person's very healthy, it's like, oh, all you need is, uh, you need this homeopathic remedy. What is that? This is stimulatory medicine. It's like turning on a switch. It's like just reminding the body to turn on a certain healing pathway that's dormant. Wow, that's that's so simple. Uh, so, so the body can need material support of substance, or it can respond to energetic reminders, signaling of stimulation, like an exercise is stimulation versus uh, uh, support, you know, you need to, to, to eat more protein with enzymes that digest it because you're not digesting in order to rebuild those muscles because you're just not able to make the, the, the muscle proteins. You know, it's interesting, you know, because um, the last question you had me starting to answer, but I really want to segue to this because it's having a good match. You know, which, you know, I, I spent you know, now I, I teach traders how to trade and I was a high profile dating coach for a long time. And one of the programs and I still coach people that way. One of the programs I always have was called your life blueprint, your love blueprint. We have a blueprint. We are who we are. It's and, and I think, you know, the guy who wrote the five love languages was really brilliant. You know, it's like, you know, words of affirmation, acts of service, physical touch. Words mean nothing to me. You know, it's like. I love having conversations, right? But words, you know, oh, you're so great. It doesn't do that. But, you know, you, you, you touch me the right way and, you know, and I just light up and I feel great. That's why I go get massage, you know, 
once a week, right? You know, and, and I go to acupuncture because acupuncture works for me. I mean, I go and lay down an acupuncture and I want to share this experience because I think you'll enjoy the story. When I, there's a guy named Dr. Andy Rosenfarb, who's the eye acupuncture guy, you know, and Andy's, Andy's yeah. the best. I mean, Andy, Andy doesn't believe you, you know, you can have macular degeneration for 40 years and you can still see clearly, you know, he's, he uses the energetic things and, 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 um, that was that machine that was given to me, you know, his little, um, little AC 3000 machine. Right. And when I went to one of his trained acupuncturists in LA, it was, uh, Don was his name. Awesome guy. And he literally, I went in there and you know, he put all the needles and I started tripping out because acupuncture to me puts me into another world because that that's such a good modality for me. My body reacts to it. Like absolutely puts me somewhere else. And I remember Glenn that, I'm laying there in his uh, room and he walks in and he has a silver plate and he puts it over my eyes and I felt the energy pulling out of my eyes and I go, this is the coolest thing. No other acupuncturist has ever done this before, right? I'm just going to go with it. And I just felt it and I felt the energy and I felt like all that, like it was just pulling stuff out of my eyes a couple of years ago. And then it stopped and I saw him look down and he left. About 15 minutes later, he comes back in and I said, Don, Don, he goes, what? I go, what a great session. I said, thanks for coming in 15 minutes ago. He goes, what are you talking about? He says, I was outside talking to my mom on the phone. I didn't come in here. I said, you did. You put a silver plate over my eyes. So I brought some type of healing angel in there. I brought some type of spirit in there. And then acupuncture can do that for me. I mean, I could go get acupuncture and it will take me to that place 90% of the time. I can get on the pulse machine and it will take me somewhere. I go and, you know, put those little sponges over my eyes and put the electrical current in and, you know, the light flashes for the first, what, 15, 20 seconds, right? Which tells you your eyes are healthy, right? And then your eyes get used to it. If they don't pulse, then you got to turn it up and I'm on the second lowest one. And I see the light show for about 30 seconds. And I can tell you, Glenn, I have it on for 30 minutes. I don't know where and what happens from minute eight to minute 28. You know, all of a sudden I hear it go beep, beep, beep. And I'm like, okay, I went somewhere. I didn't fall asleep. I went somewhere. Mm -hmm. And that's something that it, it's a great way to end this because I think a lot of people don't understand that. And that's what I love. And you give out your website and stuff like that. You have a, you know, a, a questionnaire and stuff like that. Cause when I started working with you, it's like, I felt very aligned and I felt very trusting. And I was like, oh, this feels, you know, this feels good. You know, I've had muscle testers, I've had people, you know, it's like, I trust. And that's the biggest thing. So how does somebody know if a remedy and how do you know if a remedy is a good match, but how do you get, we start talking about this with people and their instincts, how do they know if a remedy is a good match? So that's a two part question. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's such a, a big question. It's like, to me, the question. Oh, yeah. And, and what, what I consider evidence-based medicine is that there's evidence that this body, that you, that this person in front of me or 3,000 miles away that I'm connecting with testing remotely, uh, we'll talk about you know, how we do that, that there's evidence that there's a healing response to this medicine. So not a clinical trial, but an energetic trial, an informational trial. It's like when we, it's like sending a signal like say, saying, uh, maybe think about uh, a food, watermelon. How do you feel about, do you feel like having watermelon for lunch? You know, you don't have to actually put it in your bloodstream to see how the body responds to it. There's a subtle energetic response. And that's, so that's what we do. We communicate with the body either it started out 40 years ago. I learned how to do that electronically through electroacupuncture, German diagnostic electroacupuncture. We actually measure the energy flow of the acupuncture points and meridians in, in person uh, and how the body re reacted to different signals, different stimuli, say a, a sample of liver tissue from a healthy animal, healthy biodynamically raised cow low potency, so there's actual cells in there. So you have energetic samples or stimuli that 
I think of as the, the linguistics of the body. You know, we have the conscious mind and we think in words, we think in pictures, we think in feelings, emotions. Well, at a cellular level, our body is communicating with its own language that's about different parts of the body, different tissues, different nutrients, different, uh, the same kind of things we think about on a, a conscious level too, emotions, for example. Uh, the, the meridians are, are co communication channels. They go through the teeth to the eyes. Almost all of them go to the eyes and then they go to the fingers and toes. Uh, so we look at that overview of the bioenergetic, the body electric, the bioenergetic body and how it responds and reacts to questions, to stimuli. How's your liver? If there's no reaction, it's like, your liver's okay. It's like, whatever, somebody's asking my, about my liver. I don't know, I'm fine. But if your liver's stressed and you get, and the body gets this signal liver, it's it's already like, it's already on edge about that. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, the liver, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're talking about that. That's in our current conversation. And if we find, say, uh, a nutrient or an herb, that when we bring that into the sentence, into the communication, now the body that was saying liver, yeah, 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 now it's saying, oh yeah, liver's happy with that. It's like, I, I got what I need, no problem. So we bring the body from a state of five or three or 21, however many different stresses it's trying to, you know, keep its finger in the holes in the dike. <laughs> and we find what balances each of those to where now we bring the body to a state of coherence, a state of balance, a state of oneness, a state where it has everything that it needs, every material substance, every quantum energetic frequency, every conscious uh, informational meaning, pat meaning pattern, like a, a thought form, to where the body is just doing what it needs. It, it's not like, oh, now it's healed. No, but it's healing fast. <laughs> it's not like I could be healing faster if I didn't have to keep my fingers in the, plugging all these holes that are leaking, trying to heal these things. No, now it's actually healing. So instead of trying to heal something for 20 years and winding up with cancer, you can actually finish the healing in a, in a month. It's generally a month, one month cycle. We find by the end of a month, You've done what you need to with those particular things. Sometimes, very occasionally, you'll need the same stimulus or the same support again and again. I'll give you a, a, an extreme example. We had a, a boy with some learning challenges, uh, you know, young teenage boy. And uh, when we tested, he one of the things that he needed was a homeopathic complex for detoxifying petrochemicals. It's like, and, and we couldn't, talking with the parents, nothing really, you know, came to the forefront of like, well, maybe he, that a big exposure to petrochemicals or some, some particular relationship with a petrochemical source. Nothing really came to mind. Another month, and, and I think five out of six months in a row, it's like, wow, he needs that again? Wow, there's such... You had to have some kind of unusual exposure to something that was petrochemically based. It's like, it's usually done in a month. And, and finally, they, uh, they <laughs> made a connection. It's like, could it be <laughs> when he was a little baby, he loved erasers? Loved erasers? Yeah, he ate them. He, any eraser he could get his hands on, he ate that eraser. And erasers, you know, they're not made out of rubber from a rubber tree anymore. They're, they're petrochemically based. The one time knowing that how much he loves erasers, his grandma took him shopping and bought him this giant eraser. And it, it was in the shopping bag in the back of the car. And he was in the back of the car. And by the time they got home, it was half oh, God. And, 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 and ate the rest of it probably by the next day. It's like, hmm, you know, that could be it. You know, you eat that stuff and it's not digestible. It's like kind of like animals eating grass, like trying to get parasites out or something, maybe. But but this petrochemical, so maybe he had parasites is probably my first thought. And it's trying to push him through with this undigestible stuff. But, you know, some of it's going to go into the appendix and just sit there for years. 
So even if he's not eating petrochemicals anymore, he's still absorbing them into the immune system. So yeah, it was just a, a wild and crazy thing. But in most cases, you know, we the same kind of healing may come back around again, like say for me with mercury, I got out the source within a year, but I, I had it all through my body and different organs. And so for the past 40 years or so, uh, 30, however many years, I'm progressively eliminating mercury from one organ for a while and then from another organ for a while. When it came to my brain, finally detoxifying mercury, my brain wasn't doing that great. I was in my 60s. I had stopped reading and writing. I was kind of doing sabbatical, living on the farm to get my health back. And uh, and I did start doing chelation to, to pull oral chelation to pull the mercury out of my brain. That led to a series of grand mal seizures where my body was just downloading more mercury than the system could handle all at once. Finally, you know, finished the chelation, no more grand mal seizures. And, uh, and then I wrote 12 books and, you know, came back to practice and, you know, help other people again. So, you know, we can heal all kinds of things. You know, the, the medical system didn't have any clue. They said, no, oh, no, we don't know what's half, half of half of seizures. We don't know what's causing them. Oh, I knew a half a dozen things that had helped to trigger it. Uh, and then plus underlying causes, none of it's on their radar. They just have drugs. I tried a few of their drugs. You know, one of the few times in my life I've ever taken medical drugs. I thought, well, maybe God wants me to be humble here. It's like, this is a pretty humbling situation. I tried the drugs. The drugs were worse than the disease, just like the study on hypertension. The, the people, the patients and, and the people in the community could all confirm, no, the drug is worse than the disease. So I had to stop and, and just to heal it myself. It's amazing. This is a wealth of information that, you know, I'm not going to listen to your hours. I mean, I love, to me, I'm passionate about this stuff and it really makes me, I don't know, I just, you know, when I hear you talk, I say to myself, good, I'm really on a good path. You know, it's like we can doubt ourselves at times. I mean, you know, if we have a disease, our mind will look for concepts of it. Remember, I think I spoke to you one time, I said, Oh my God, a line was disappearing in my, in my car on my Spotify thing. And the first thing you thought was, you know, the line was, was, was not disappearing. It was uh, fading a little bit more. The other ones were clearer. And immediately you said stigmatism, because <laughs> that's what a stigmatism does. You know, it, it's, it's just, it's so true. And it's so funny. It's like, I'll play with things. And this is, this is, and we give all your contact information now, but it's amazing when I, if I stress out about something or if I think about something, like all of a sudden I'm walking at night and, uh, and dusk, dusk is hazy, but I'm walking at night and I go, was it always this hazy? And I'm thinking to myself, it's dusk. That's what dusk is. It's a hazy light. It's not crystal clear in your mind. And that's why you, you come through the, you know, the beauty of what you just shared is that you're constantly healing. Because I would tell people all the time, self-help with yourself, personal development. A guy once said to me, he was 37, he was in personal development for two years. And he says, how much longer do I got to do this till I get it right? And I go, how old do you want to live? He goes, 80. I said, you got another 43 years. He goes, no, I don't want to spend the money and I don't want to spend the time. And I'm thinking like, well, you might as well just quit right now and just stay where you're at because... It's it's something that yep. wherever we're at, and, and I try to journal every day, like what my wins were, you know, because I'm definitely a little hard on myself being a New Yorker and being an athletic person, you know, what are my wins? And I try to look at my wins and then I look at how I can improve upon the losses or whatever the, 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 the things I need to improve upon. But I'm doing it now with more kindness. And that way, because we just, we're here on this planet to heal. And, and somebody said something to me a long, long time ago. I don't know. Do you know Peter Evans? A great yeah. intuitive healer in LA. And he even said to me, he says, well, he goes, you know, he says, God always gets your attention one way or another. He goes, when your business slowed down, he got your attention with money. You still don't listen to him. Now he's messing with your eyes a little bit. And he's trying to get you to see what you're not seeing. Hello. Right. So, <laughs> Yeah. Things happen for us, not to us. And that's why I really love working with you because yeah. you enable 
you enable the kindness of healing and not, you know, like I had a stomach ache on and off for three weeks. I say it to you and you're not, like, oh, go get some tests done, right? You know, you're more like, mm, all right, your body's getting rid of something. Just let it purge, right? And it makes me feel better, not frustrated, because I was a little boy who had a stomach ache every single day. But if you saw my diet when I was a kid, I mean, it was all dairy products and, and sugared cereals and other things. So, you know, if I get a stomach ache, I don't really like it. So um, how do people get in touch with you, give out all the information now? And of course, we'll have an, a link will be underneath, you know, an email and everything else. And the link will be on YouTube because um, we're going to break this into many different segments because we spoke for almost two hours. And, you know, we know the human attention span is not as long as our attention span. Sean, you've got a great attention span. I mean, you probably heard your dad say this stuff hundreds of times. And I'm sure you learn something new every single time for what your dad, you know, says it. And I'm sure you feel very blessed, you know. It's cool, though. It's, you're blessed, man. You're blessed to... You know, you're blessed to have a dad that's constantly evolving as a soul to heal other people. It's, it's, a, it's a cool experience. My dad was constantly dissolving, <laughs> not evolving. He left the earth at 56. So, uh, you know, he got MS because he didn't want to get MS and manifested MS. And then they told him in his early, late 40s that it, it he got diagnosed. He said, you'll be fine. You're in your late forties. And he just, every single time a pain went, he went to another doctor and said, well, we might've found another spot on your brain. And well, that was the end of him. And, and then, you know, I wish he was still around because no matter what he was, he was the only dad I got, but, um, how do people get in touch with you? A good place to start, uh, is, uh, we have about 50 websites. So actually, let, let me give you my personal website, which has the link to all of them. And you can pick and choose the different topics, like different eye diseases and whatnot, to take real specific. Uh, that would be glenswartout.com. It's G-L-E-N-S-W-A-R-T-W-O-U-T.com. And that's why you just call me Dr. Glenn. <laughs> it's easier. Uh, that's a good hub that connects to everything. Uh, for my background story, and uh, which we recommend, uh, it's about a 44 minute video webinar, uh, automated webinar. You can go to acceleratesselfhealing.com, acceleratesselfhealing.com, and just sign up for the webinar, watch that. And at the end of the webinar, you'll have an opportunity to, to have a free consultation with us. Um, you can, if you're interested in the, the remedies, we've, we're making over, well, several hundred remedies, uh, natural botanical nutritional combinations, and also energy medicine tools. Uh, we've got that all laid out at uh, an online store, so you can feel free to look at formulations and read about all the different things, check them out. And that's at remedymatch.com. So that's one way to find your remedy match is do it yourself. We've got a do it yourself support system as well uh, doing it yourself doesn't have to be without systems and tools and technology. There's a great company out of London, England, developed by a, a, an Australian, the first major Australian acupuncturist who started their training programs there. Uh, was fascinated as I was with the same kind of electrodermal biocommunication systems. And he, a uh, patient who he helped get out of, of being bedridden, that put to, helped him put together the technology. So we have a website called wellnesswhispering.com where you can uh, access that and sign up for a, a free lifetime account where you can get an analysis of what's happening in your body in real time with a 10 second vocal sample. No, no software download, no cost, no technology you need to buy. Uh, and we'll be uh, putting together a, a course to uh, help people uh, understand that. But, but when you get the, the results of your scan, it's like a 14 page interactive guide. You can click on the things and, and read more about each one. So you don't really even need us, but we're here to bring more to the table, uh, like how that scan relates to our remedy system. And uh, we're just here as a resource to, to help you, whether you're a patient or a doctor, we're working with 
with uh, some doctors now using our remedies in their practice and getting great results as we've been getting for all the years. Uh, reversing irreversible eye diseases and other, you know, it's, it's not about the disease. The disease is just a name. It's a, it's a word, we're, but we're giving that word all this power. We're making it a demon, really. I have, I have this disease, you know, I have mercury toxicity, it's killing me. Or is it that, oh, I'm, I'm finding where that mercury is coming from, getting it out of my body, supporting and stimulating my systems to clean it out, whatever symptom comes up, that's a clue where it's stuck and I need something to get it unstuck. So the symptom, the disease is just a name for a symptom or a, a, a category or a class of symptoms. Uh, so realize that it's a demon, test all spirits, like, no, you don't need to take that on. It's, it's there, don't give it any power. You can heal it, uh, you know, like I healed, I was gonna die of stroke or I healed glaucoma or I healed uh, grand mal seizures. You know, it's, it's, it's only permanent if you take it on as a thing and you own it and you now have it. You don't need to have it. You can be moving, it's what's something moving through you. It's not you. It's something that doesn't belong, a toxin that needs to move out and you need certain nutrients and phytonutrients to, to facilitate that or certain quantum energies, infrared, uh, visible light frequencies, red, red light, uh, night light, sleep with a frequency that goes through the eyelids into the eye tissues that actually activates the mitochondria, which are the bacteria in all of our cells that make the energy of the cell, 95% of it. And when you get enough energy, you can go from chronic de degenerative disease, phase one energized terrain to phase two, where you rejuvenate the cell and start making the cell function again. We have people with, who've lost lots of vision to glaucoma and in a few months of these kinds of, of systems of support, they're actually regaining about half of the vision that they lost. So half of the vision loss in glaucoma could be cells that need to be rejuvenated, but they're still alive. Hey, if you're still alive, you can heal, right? And the macula. <laughs> yeah, macular degeneration, same thing. Scar tissue resolving in the, in the macula. When I went to school, that wasn't a thing, but no, we have Harvard trained retinologists okay sending letters up for our, our, our clients, for their patients, saying, I've never seen this before. The textbooks say it doesn't happen, but the scar tissue is going away. This person was legally blind. They're, they're bleeding in the retina, and now the vision is coming back to a functional level. Not necessarily to 2020. We don't know. You know, I don't know, and you can't know what you can heal, but you can only find out by trying. And you're not going to heal it with drugs and surgery. Those are damage control but they do further damage. It's a double-edged sword, you know? Okay, maybe it has some benefits to a drug or a surgery. And again, sometimes it's life-saving and you need it to, to maintain your life. Um, so we're not against those things, but we wanna follow the first rule of medicine, which is primum non nocere, first do no harm. What does no harm? It's not drugs and surgery. There's always harm with drugs and surgery. It's why they're licensed, why they have to, you know, go to school for 12 years to, to use that tool because it's dangerous. It does harm. We want to use nature. We're nature deficient. We've removed ourselves from nature, so we don't have enough nature. And now we put lots of unnatural things in our system, unnatural processing of our foods. And uh, there's a solution. You know, this was a good end. And, and I'm going to add something to it because it's really like an aha moment, you know, with when you said you have it. You don't have to have it. It could just be passing through. And it's something I watched my parents have. I watched my dad have MS and he embraced MS. I watched my mom have, you know, many different things. They had it. They have it. They have it. They have it. Right. And with me, I don't want it. <laughs> so it's like a difference it's like you know i don't want it it can pass Absolutely. it can pass through me and you know my eyesight's you know really good so let it remain really good and just let it keep getting better because i really don't want it I, you know i have no interest in it so um, i think that's a, a great way to end this yeah. spectacular conversation just just think of the difference between the placebo effect which is mm -hmm. again as powerful as any medicine 
and the nocebo effect, which is equally powerful, but damaging to us. If we having a disease, owning it, visualizing it in your body, this thing dam killing us, damaging us, we're creating a nocebo effect. We are injuring ourselves as powerful as whatever the, the, the toxin is that's in there is what we're adding to it with that uh, taking it so on as a thing that we have. It's like, no, no, no. This is what I'm, the disease is evidence that you're still alive and your body's fighting to heal it. It's the attempt to heal. I love it. And you can. You can Perfect do way it. to end it. This was amazing. Yeah. <laughs>